Hello to everyone in the Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Cathedral community and all of our friends. Christ is risen, Christos Anesti. It's such a joy again to be speaking to you. And we're going to go right into our, 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 our topic of reflection for today, today, which is we will continue our reflections, our meditations on the Beatitudes with a discussion of the second. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Now, there are several approaches that we can take when reflecting on this beatitude. But for my reflections over the next few days, I will focus on just two of them, and really one of them today and the rest in the days that follow. The first, which is again the topic of today's video, and the second, which will be parsed out with greater depth, because I think there is a, a limitless depth almost to the second interpretation. The former, the one that we'll discuss today, reflects a more literal reading of the Beatitude, while the latter, the one that we'll discuss at greater length, a more spiritual reading of the text. But both, as we will see, are quite important. So let's begin with the more literal reading of this text. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. That is to say that those who mourn will be comforted. When we hear the word mourning, we might find ourselves considering it in relation to those things for which we are grieved. We are sorrowful for tr the tragedies, the difficulties, the pains in our, this life. We are bereaved at the loss of our loved ones. And even Christ knows what this is like, for this is what he felt when he was standing before the grave of his dear friend Lazarus, he felt the sting of grief, the result of death when he stood there. He was weeping. He groaned in his spirit. He was deeply troubled. He was pained at this loss. Yet, what's interesting is immediately before that, we read just prior to him coming up to Lazarus's tomb, he declares to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And with this conviction, we find strength in Paul's words in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 to declare, O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? We find comfort in knowing that death is not the final word for humanity. This does not take away the reality of grief, but it does allow us to follow Paul again in saying that we will not grieve like those who have no hope. We grieve our losses with hope in the resurrection. And in this way, we can transform be comforted by the way we ascribe meaning to our grief. And perhaps in doing so, the comfort we will receive, a comfort that comes from the truth, the reality of the resurrection, will see this beatitude fulfilled. And it's not only in this way. It's not only in the sorrow that we, this sorrow that we face regularly, the sorrow that comes from loss of death. We can also grieve other losses, not just death. We can grieve the loss of our relationships, our identities, meaning. Life circumstances change and we grieve the loss of our prior circumstances. We grieve the loss of financial stability, etc. These are things that we grieve, we pain, we sorrow for. And in fact, we might be feeling such losses, such grief quite acutely at present with all that's going on in the world. This grief is also counted amongst that for which we will be comforted in this literal reading of the Beatitude. We will be comforted 
our, our circumstances, they might not change. In fact, they might worsen. But again, we find comfort in Christ. We know that these griefs, these sorrows, these pains, our mourning is not the end of the story. And it's a lot easier to say this than to really fully embrace it and to live its reality. Yes, we can say things will get better. All will be well. But right now, maybe they're not. And it's okay to be pained at that. Pained, but with hope. Hope that if we are absolutely dependent on God, like we were reflected on in the first of the Beatitudes, if we are totally dependent on him, we will recognize that he is the one who created us and who sustains us and will ultimately care for us. And we can enter into the reality of the kingdom of heaven here and now. And we will also have the hope of the final word in the coming of the kingdom. The kingdom which we only have in glimpse today. As, as, a, as a shadowy reflection of its fullness. And yet we live it presently and are comforted in that reality when we mourn the very reality, the difficulties of this life that we're living presently. Both can exist simultaneously. And how we orient our minds, our hearts, our attentions can reshape the way that we experience this reality. And with that being said, we're going to take a, a deeper look at this second beatitude in the next few days. Looking at what I like to say is a more spiritual reading of it. It's still connected and it's still quite literal as to what's being said, but the meaning is, and the depth of meaning that it provides, I think is, it allows us to better understand how we can have a literal reading of this beatitude and not think that the words that we will be comforted is just a platitude. God bless you. I hope these videos have been edifying. We're here for you, we love you. Anything that you need, don't hesitate to reach out on social media, in the comment section. <laughs> Send us an email, give us a call. We are here for you and praying for you. Christos Anesti, Christ is risen.